Hello and good morning. It's a very cold uh, Sunday morning for me. I'm not sure what time it is for you guys, uh, but I'd just like to say hello and I hope you're really warm. Um, in fact, saying that, the heat has just gone off. That's really good, isn't it? Make me shiver anymore. Um, just like to do a quick update, really, of um, to the events of yesterday. Really, went to the Autumn Model Show, which is not my local, but it's uh, we travelled down to it and it's not far from us. And I uh, thought it'd be really good to uh, meet up with a couple of YouTubers. And uh, I already had spoken to Susanna from Berenger District, and we all agreed that we were going to catch up. Um, so that was really cool. Maybe a couple of other YouTubers on the way. Um, so we arrived, got in, had a look round, and um, saw one of the layouts that's going to be in one of the magazines. I'll tell you which magazine because it's a spoiler alert. Um, but the Vale of Oxbury, um, Callum was lucky enough to have a little play on that. The, uh, one of the guys there, Nick, uh, he does the exhibition, watches his channel, and the guy that actually built it <laughs> um, let Callum have a little play, so he, he moved the trains up and down, so that was really cool, and um, I think for him, very inspiring, so um, yeah, he didn't crash anything, he did, he did good, and a horn on cue, I haven't done that for a while, I have to do it. So um, yeah, it was quite exciting, that, um, and watching him take control I was like, oh, it was quite cool no it was good um, and then we went round and then I met up Susanna and then met up with Tony Northeastern and then we've met up with Fred Willoughby Lyon um, met Ian a guy uh, he's got a channel called BA 14 Eagle and he goes around videoing a lot of exhibitions even though he lives miles away so where we all caught up and was chatting I forgot to film anything and a few of the other tubers we all forgot to uh, <laughs> catch video stuff but if you do want to see uh, the layout and all the layouts that are there and in great detail please do check out Ian's channel um, it's BA14 Eagle and you'll see the link up there I always do that but it's probably over the next Saturday so you'll see a little thing now I'll put up there and uh, go over there and you can see the autumn sh model show so go over to there and you can see the autumn model show and you can see all the layouts so please do check out Ian's channel um, I bought a couple of models through um, through the week, a couple of new locos, and I wanted to go to the show to get some chips, some decoders. So I bought them, I've actually installed them. Um, one of them took me two hours this morning to fit in, and I'll show you why. Well, I won't show you why, because it's encased and I won't open it up. Um, so I didn't want to do a how to fit a decoder, because there's a billion uh, videos out there of that. So I'll show you some of the new trains I've got, new locos. Um, but I have actually got to decode them, uh, and I thought I'd just quickly show you the decode, what I set the decoder to, because um, a lot of people say I'm like, my train's being slow, um, and what settings they set on, so I thought I'd actually just show you a couple, and actually set them up so you can see the difference it makes. Um, not everybody has the option to set the CVs, uh, Gauge Master does, I think many systems do nowadays, um, back in the time there was only very few, but um, yeah, I'll sort of show you how it's done. So anyway, let's uh, get round and uh, we'll show you what's running and what we've got. So cool. The heat has come on now, so don't make to change. Right, come on in. So as you can see, this is um, one of my newer locos. It's a little Great Western Pannier Tank, number 6407. She's made by Backman and she has a Backman six pin decoder. Uh, the decoder actually sits just under the chimney. Um, so it actually sits just under here, is where the decoder sits, under there. There's two screws to undo the bodywork, one on this end and one about here. Um, you basically undo them and the body just lifts straight up. Um, absolutely brilliant design on this. Uh, instead of trying to fit plastic lugs in this side and fit that side and squeeze it and pull it and break the rails, which many models are. Um, so, uh, very impressed with this. Um, I've only got the, I have to say, I've only installed the decoder. I haven't set it yet, and I think we'll go down and show um, the settings. Because you can see, if I actually press reverse now, that will stop and then go forward. As soon as I press reverse, it just literally stops on a dime and goes. Um, we actually want it to sort of go, uh, if I can simulate it, go along, slow down, reverse, and then go backwards. So that's what I'm going to set the decoder to do. I always say to people, uh, when you're programming, your trains or if installing decoders make sure you have a copy like this for hand a decoder insulation book um, this came free in a magazine um, as you can see who it's made by uh, and it is uh, compliant with the modern standards of um, 
DCC and all the rest of it in DC. So it tells you there, it's basically for DCC, this, this shows you what your uh, what your feeds and pickups are. I'll just give you a bit more light there. Um, let's put a light on, that might even be better, Gazza. Got a lamp there. It's all flickering in the light, let's do that, that's better. There we go. Sorry about that. Anyway, so uh, this is a real good thing to have to hand. Um, tells you all about your decoder color, uh, wire colors and um, you know what they do and how they do and all the rest of it. Decoder sizes, the ones you need and all the rest. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend a little book like this. Um, it's great to just quickly look at instead of trying to remember and wind up wrong and then blowing your decoder, which is the most common thing that we all do from time to time. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you're an expert or not, sometimes things get forgotten. And these have like different different installs and different locos. It's really interesting. So I'm not gonna go too much detail on that. That is a, a very quick keep to hand book. Um, so I keep that with my little stuff over there. And these are my other little sheets I keep. Um, these are my basic settings for my decoders um, that I sort of keep. Uh, I'm doing a heavy freight, I'll set these settings. So fast passenger service and um, heavy freight, and then we've got steam trains, that kind of thing. Um, I sometimes fit my own, do some of my own little settings I do. Um, these are uh, very handy things to know. Obviously some decoders have different values, have different values on here, so do check your decoder settings first. Um, might not actually go up to these ranges, but these are just as a guide. Um, they're normally generic, um, but you know, it's, they're just really handy to have, you know, it tells you which, what you want, CV1, and what, you know, you're adding the low code to is your starting voltage and all the rest of it. Um, and then that one I keep for controlling the lights. It's just a quick reference for me, really. So there we go, we got our little uh, train on the track. We'll put her over there. We go to our Gauge Master. This is a Gauge Master Prodigy Express one. I'll tell you what, it's uh, it works for me. I'll pull that wire over there because it's going to spin down and fall on the floor, no doubt. Right, so I don't think you can see the back lick. Uh, we'll go to program, program track. So we're going to test it first. I'm going to read it, so press read. So that's easy, I can see it now. So that's enter. So that's now going to read this loco here. So it's going to read whatever it's in there. And it's having a little think. That's a bit funny because the LED I'm picking up the camera, so it might be a little bit weird. So it's number three. That's what the setting is on there. So what we're going to do, I'm going to come back to here, go to there, and we're going to program. So press program track. You have to scroll right through. So read, set, consist, program track. And that's that's what this is, the program track. Press enter. And we're going to give it a new address, and we're going to give it um, six, seven, Oh no, that's not right. So I've just come out of it. Damn. Press the wrong number. Program track, because it's still on the program track, it's not a problem. 6407. Get it right, Gaza. So that'll be the new that that number there will be the new address for that loco, right? Which is the number which is just there. That's what I set and probably what all you guys do. So I'm probably teaching you to uh, to eat candy here, um, which I won't, don't want to. So anyway, press enter. That is the address. That sends a little signal to the train. Doesn't do anything. Then when I start in voltage, I'm gonna put six in on this one. Press send. And then I'm gonna give this, um, I'm gonna do this one and the other one the same sort of. Uh, so I'm gonna do 15, enter. That's my uh, accelerate, accelerate speed. And then I'm gonna do, um, I'll do 15 again on this one, I'll do it on there, just to show, otherwise it will get too confusing. Top speed, it doesn't go super fast, because it's a slow loco, so uh, in real life, I'm actually gonna put 150. I've got 255, I think, is the um, value. CV, I can do CV6 if I want to, and then go into more complex things um, as written on there, but I won't, because um, if you get this far, then you've actually got a gold medal, so. I'm just going to press enter. We've gone back to um, that's it, all done. So let's come out of it. I actually go to the track now. So we put the loco back on the track and then we grab our controller. Now, three won't work. So we now have to put in, I'm going to do this one handy. This is a miracle. So we need to put loco and then we need to put in, let's do it down there, Gaza. 
6407, put the right number in, press enter. That now selects that loco there. And then if we press um, some go buttons. Okay, now I'm trying to do a double, there we go. So she's now going, let me zoom on there. And then I'm just gonna hit reverse now. So I've now hit reverse, and you see it stopped, and then suddenly she goes back. So it's a little bit more prototypical, so you can get a bit more speed now. And you see it takes a little while to get up and running. So as soon as I press reverse, as soon as I press reverse that gantry there, so I've now pressed reverse. Now she slowly stops, and then she'll start picking up again. So if you remember the first bit, when I showed you before I changed the decoder, um, it, it suddenly stopped and then went, stopped and then went. Um, this now actually slows down and goes, um, so it does a completely different thing. So it's more prototypical and looks a little bit more, a bit more dainty on the track now as opposed to be uh, bounding up and down. So if I just hit the signal box, press, there you go, reverse. She has to slow down. Again, if I set the um, settings a bit more, it will take longer to slow down. Um, and, and again, I can make, refine it better how I want to. So that's what I've done with that one. So that's that one, that's that loco. I saw this and actually fell in love with it and um, I had to add this one to the layout. Come on baby, relight my fire. I won't stop singing, don't panic. So there you go, this is my new little one, the stopper there. Bosh, look at that. What a beauty, eh? another little shunter. This is a Batman shunter and it's got a Batman um, decoder in it and they are a pain to fit. Um, I had to squeeze the decoder actually just in the side there and make some moderations taking some of the weight out because uh, there just is no room inside these little things. And uh, then I got it in, it was making brrr, crunky noises. Um, but anyway, you got it all in. You get these tiny little steps and the tiny little rails and everything pings off and, oh, two hours that took me. But it's in, it's running. Um, let's put that one on them. Always pick them up by the toolboxes. See these toolboxes, sorry. See these toolboxes there? Always pick them up from the side there. That's the only way you should handle these locos. because it's so fragile. So let's have a look. That one, again, I've set this one. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is on, um, yes, yeah, so I've done this one, sorry. This is now in ROM3 and then added to 653. So press reverse, now press reverse, you see she's still trundling on and eventually she'll slow down and then she starts coming back. Here we go, over the point work. I'll tell you what, we can bring her down in the point work. So we'll reverse it and we'll get to go over the points. Let's do that, shall we? Come on, quickly. People's tea's going cold. So we'll do that, we'll press reverse and we'll throw the switch, see if we can plan this. Press reverse, oh, look at that clockwork. Try and get the train in the picture would be actually helpful. She should then come back down. All the points are set. Look at that. Here's our new loco. Uh, I've painted some detail inside the cab there you can see and I've fit a little matey in there who was a right little pain to fit but he's in there driving it i do like to see drivers in my trains so yes that is our new one little rail freight very very nice
So I think that brings us to the end of our video today. So I'd just like to say to you guys, thank you for watching. And um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and feel free to comment. And um, I'm sure we'll catch you very soon. Look after yourselves, whatever you do. And uh, always say it, happy modeling. Anyway guys, take care, have a great week. Catch you soon, cheerio.